All right, welcome into the B-Side podcast. My guest today is Elder Scott McDaniel. And uh, Scott, how are you? I'm very well, Justin. Yeah. Pastor Justin. <laughs> no, we don't need to restart over that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're, we are in Deuteronomy chapter 4. So actually, if you're listening to this on Sunday, we've already got to Deuteronomy chapter 5. But before we got there, um, we there's these three verses that we... I kind of skipped over, and I want to address them. They're called the Cities of Refuge. And so I'm going to read Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 41 through 43, and then we'll uh, get, into, uh, get into it. Then Moses set apart three cities across the Jordan to the east. Someone could flee there who committed manslaughter, killing his neighbor accidentally without previously hating him. He could flee to one of those cities and stay alive. Bezer in the wilderness of the plateau land, belonging to the Reubenites, Ramoth and Gilead, belonging to the Gadites, or Golan and Bashan, belonging to the Manassites. Manassites. <clears throat> you just got to hit those Old Testament like names with confidence, and people go, yep, that sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so these are these things called cities of refuge. Uh, if there was an act of manslaughter, people could go to them. Uh, could you maybe give, just color that in a little bit more? Um, just talk to us about these things, because I hear you're the expert. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah. that, that's, a, that's a high bar. <laughs> uh, well, let me just uh, back up a, a little bit. Um, the reason why I, I really just find subjects like the Cities of Refuge just so fascinating is because when you, when you read them in their original context, mm. um, they're, they're just representing what they seem to be on the surface. Right. You know, God has prepared for His people a place where they can run mm. for sanctuary, uh, for refuge, in case of an unintentional sin. Right. And he knew that his people would need that in mm. order to survive as a community. Mm. And uh, the more you read into uh, the Scripture, and uh, this topic actually uh, surfaces multiple times as, uh, as God is leading his people through the wilderness. Mm. It first comes in uh, while they're sort of wandering in the wilderness, um, and then in Numbers, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, in Joshua, as right before they were going to head into the Promised Land, mm -hmm. and then, um, or Deuteronomy, rather, mm -hmm. before they head into the Promised Land, and then in Joshua, when they're mm -hmm. beginning to possess that land. Yeah. And you find that this subject is repeated, mm -hmm. and you had the, the first uh, verses from Deuteronomy 4, then mm -hmm. it's in Deuteronomy 19, Joshua yep. 20, and then Numbers uh, 33, I think it is, yeah. or 35. Uh, so repetition is important. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how God emphasizes something. Right. And, you know, when God says something once, it's important. <laughs> yes, when He says right. something twice, it's really important. When <laughs> yeah. He says it three times, yeah. it's really, really, really important. Right. And so, um, you know, as a new believer, and I'm reading this, uh, you know, I can understand it for what it was, mm -hmm. okay? just in its context, in its history, right. um, this place for his people. But the more I, I learned about Jesus in the New Testament, mm -hmm. I began to see, like, wow, you know, this is really kind of a, a prefigure mm -hmm. of w the refuge that we have in Jesus. Yeah. And then when you run into Hebrews uh, chapter 6, you find that very interesting verse. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's verse 18, and it has a very particular word in it, yeah. um, and uh, the connection that, that the scholars make, and these people are much brighter than I am, for sure, uh, in this area. Um, you know, Jesus uh, often referred to the Septuagint. Mm. Now, that is the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, mm. because, oddly enough, in the time of Jesus, a lot of the Hebrew people could not speak Hebrew. Right. They were speaking That's Greek, correct. because yep. that was the lingua franca mm -hmm. of the day. I mean, all business was done in, in mm -hmm. that. That was the empire, um, you know. Right. Um, that survived uh, after the Romans uh, took them over. And so this very particular word in Hebrews is the exact same. It's very rare, mm. and, and that's the one that, that appears in the Old Testament for, for this uh, fleeing for refuge. Mm. And, uh, and so that, that really makes the connection that, you know, the inspired biblical um, author of Hebrews was making an intentional connection back to the cities of refuge. Right. And let me just, for the folks at home, let me read Hebrews chapter 6, verses, uh, verse 18. Uh, so that through two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to seize the hope set before us. Uh, and so that's that's the verse in particular you're talking about, and I'm I'm assuming that correct. word is that word's refuge, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that was the the linchpin that that's really yeah. connected these two things. Right. And uh, so for for me that was um, 
ju just one of the reasons why mm -hmm. I thought it was just so fascinating to, to start studying this. And then when you start yeah. to, uh, to peel it, and mm -hmm. you really have to look at all three passages. You, yeah. know, you have to look at the Deuteronomy and mm -hmm. the Numbers and the Joshua yeah. to get all of the detail sure. together. Uh, because I, I do think that um, in the earlier passages, God was preparing His people. Mm -hmm. You know, when they crossed over the Jordan River to to take a possession of the land, mm -hmm. they were going to stay pretty much on you know the west side of the river. Right. And so uh, He was calling for the three cities. Mm -hmm. But over time, when His people more fully you know mm -hmm. took the land that was promised to Abraham, uh, the other three cities on the east side of the yeah. Jordan were were right. mentioned and talked about. Yeah. And before we go further with the cities of refuge, um, you had already kind of touched on it, but I want to give it its sort of theological proper name, when, whenever we're seeing pictures of Jesus in the Old Testament, um, or patterns, Christ-like patterns, uh, that's typically called typology, um, and I know that's something that, you know, you 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 love, I love, I feel mm. like that's why the Old Testament is so important, because you're seeing these types, these pictures, um, where Jesus is sort of, you know, I, I like to say a Christ-shaped pattern, where mm. uh, the it's not the end in itself, even though that is a real reality, um, but it also points forward to something even greater, and that finds its yes and amen in the person of Jesus. Yeah, very well said. Uh, you know, there's that scripture that, that says, uh, love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, yeah. and strength. Mm. And and I think people, they overlook the mind part. Mm. You know, right. the criticism about Christians is that, oh, you have to check your brain at the door to believe yeah. this stuff. Mm. And I... I I believe it, the, the opposite is true. Right. The deeper and harder you dig, the more satisfied your mind will be, yeah. whether it's uh, through history and geography and kings, um, yeah. nations, um, events. It's mm -hmm. all accurate. Right. You know, it's yep. God's story, and yeah. so He has it right. And that's really... I, I, I feel like Christianity... I mean, obviously we know like the world's you know not not on our side, but it's it blows my mind. Like um, I just found this out in the Quran, Muhammad believes that Christians think the Trinity was God, Jesus, and Mary. Mm. So, okay, factually that's wrong. Like you know, it, we know what Christians believe at that time, and yet your holy book gets it wrong. Like Muhammad couldn't read you know the Bible right. And it's like you know, but there's not a criticism there of like, oh, actually, that yeah, you know, this guy he doesn't he doesn't even know his opponent's theology. Uh, meanwhile, you know, I just feel like every little minute fact in the Bible, it's overwhelmingly proven true. And it's like you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess I get I get mad because I feel like Christians obviously you know our our holy book is treated with so much more criticism than mm -hmm. no other book, and yet we do stand against it. Like like you're saying, it is intellectually. Um, uh, you know, stimulating, and it is true, and it is and satisfying. Reliable. Yes, yeah, yes, absolutely. satisfying. That's what yeah, there's doing. there's so much more manuscript evidence for mm. the the New Testament scriptures than any other ancient right. document by far. Yeah, it's closer in time to the original manuscripts. Yeah, and just the volume of them is yes. overwhelming, yep. and that that sort of gets overlooked. Yep, yep. And, and the sad thing about Muslims that that uh, you know they have Jesus, you know, he's Isa in mm -hmm. the scriptures. Uh, he's not God's son. You yeah. know, he didn't die on the cross. Mm. Uh, you know, God did some sort of yeah. you know, switching there. And, yeah, magic trick. Yeah, uh, they, but they see him as judge. Yeah, you know, they see him as a prophet. They see him yeah. as a judge, but they don't understand that he's truly right. God made flesh. Yeah, and you know, um, they don't rightly understand the the Trinity. Mm. And so, praying to God through His Holy Spirit yeah. would would help. You yeah, know, and straighten I mean, those things. Yeah, out. and that's exactly one of the issues that with with Muslims and Jews is the failure to see the Christ shaped yeah. patterns in the Old Testament and realizing, oh wow, actually Jesus uh, is Yahweh come in the flesh. Yeah, he really yeah. is the, the Old Testament God of Israel. He is the second person of this Trinity, um, and that's mm -hmm. why, again, for me as 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 pastor, I've really felt like we got to get in the Old Testament, and I think it's sort of my commitment is to get through Deuteronomy and Isaiah mm -hmm. because I feel like so often when Jesus is speaking, he's thinking of those two books. Oh, absolutely, and, yeah. absolutely. It's really heartbreaking, as you say, about our Jewish brothers and sisters mm -hmm. that. You know they have these scriptures. Yes. They have you know Psalm twenty two and twenty three. They yeah. have Isaiah fifty three, yeah. but you know the Lord has just veiled their eyes. Yeah, and you know, just keep praying that yep. you know that, that veil be lifted and, and they'll see him because yes. you know he was Jewish yes. in, yep. you know, in, in his uh, in his incarnation. Yeah, and that, I think that's what breaks my heart so much is as I study the Old Testament scriptures and see Jesus like, you know, it's just like you're, it's like you want like shake their shoulders and say like do you understand like he's like he's your <laughs> yeah. messiah first you know he's yeah. he's you know salvation for the jew first and the gentile and as a gentile it's like 
brother, like, you know, but, and again, I guess it's all this great plan of God where the Gentiles are now ministering to the Jews to say, yeah. do you see, behold your God? <laughs> you right, know, you know? right, right. Well, he brought us in to make the Jews jealous. Yes. And, yeah. you know, and it's, this isn't a trivial matter. You know, Jesus, mm. so, you know, I, I think he was very seriously concerned with who do you say that I am? Mm. And yeah. the answer to that question is incredibly serious. It's eternally yes. uh, consequential. Right. Yeah, so let's let's get back. We we kind of just uh, <laughs> went on a tangent praising Jesus. Uh, Amen. That's always good to do. But Amen. let's get back Amen. to uh, the uh, the cities of refuge. Do you have you you said you'd um, it's important to read some of these other verses to help understand. Do you have some of those in, in front of you? Oh, I, they're very long. Okay, I I uh, I, I will say that uh, I did preach on this. Um, I think it was goodness February maybe. Okay. Um, before you arrived, I got you. Uh, so it, it's on the the church's okay. um, the playlist somewhere. Okay, uh, so you can get all the the details. I, I think I, I went through um, gotcha uh, numbers in detail, all gotcha. those particular verses. But I, I do want to just point out that that there were uh, a, a few highlights uh, that come from mm -hmm. these detailed texts. And the first is the manslayer, mm. and I think you mentioned that in uh, Deuteronomy uh, four mm -hmm. uh, that um, these particular cities of refuge. They were set up so that if a person accidentally killed another person mm. with no malice, no forethought, uh, right. uh, no intent, uh, that, that they could flee to this city. And it's interesting that um, th these cities were set in the land where they would be essentially no more than one day's journey mm. uh, from anywhere okay. in the land. And, but you had to flee. Yeah. And... and, and we can't overlook that because this has, I, I think, gospel implication. Okay. That when you committed, or, or when the manslayer unfortunately mm -hmm. committed that that horrible accident, mm -hmm. they had to flee because right. God pr had provided uh, the avenger of blood mm. uh, for His people. Be when the shedding of blood, there's there's uh, guilt that has to be covered, mm. and um, for whoever sheds the blood of man, his blood shall mm -hmm. be shed. Yeah. And so there's a. Um, that's the justice, the eye for an eye justice that, that God needed for His people. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so the next of kin had the divine right mm -hmm. to go and execute judgment on that manslayer. And, and so that manslayer knew that somebody was coming after them yeah. with intent to, to mm -hmm. kill them. And so if, if somebody was coming after you with that, yeah. <laughs> I think you would run pretty right, fast. Right, yes. <laughs> right? And that, that's yeah. so important. Mm. Um, and I don't know if I should talk about it now or maybe at the end about fleeing mm. in our gospel message, but maybe we'll save that for the okay. end. Um, and then you have the Avenger of Blood we, we just talked about. Mm -hmm. This is a divine right given by God to the next of kin. And this is another one of these fascinating things that when you study Old Testament mm. uh, scriptures in Hebrew, uh, fortunately we have resources and tools to help right. you know, non-experts yeah. you know, kind of get a window into that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the Hebrew word that was translated as avenger of blood, I've seen it written two different ways. It's either goel or gal el. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're bringing essentially Hebrew, which is a consonantal language, mm -hmm. into, into English. And right. so you have to add these, sure. these vowels and things. And so the idea, though, is uh, this, this goel, this avenger of blood, mm. shows up in um, essentially, you know, if you look at uh, Joshua. Uh, mm -hmm. Then after Judges, there's Ruth, mm. okay? Ruth and Boaz. Yeah. Boaz was the kinsman redeemer. Mm. That kinsman redeemer, yeah. Goel, same mm. word. And so um, wow. the, the one who can redeem you, yeah. right? So, so he's executing judgment. In a way, it's redeeming the blood that was shed. Right. But, you know, when we see it in Boaz's case, you know, it's something beautiful. Right. You know, it's a restoration, mm -hmm. that, that kind of uh, redemption. And so these linkages are just so fascinating. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and this is just kind of the, the tip of the iceberg. Right. Okay. And so that's the Avenger of Blood. Uh, we have Flea. And there was a trial, you know, when this person mm -hmm. would run to the city of refuge. Uh, they were encountered by the elders of the city. Yeah. And they determined if that person truly, you know, right. was innocent or they had malice of forethought. Mm -hmm. And if, if this person had committed this sin with malice, with intention, mm -hmm. they were not given sanctuary mm. in the city of refuge and right. they were at the hands of the yeah. the, the uh, avenger of blood and and finally 
Uh, and, and, I, just, and those elders were also Levites, correct? Because I think those cities yes. were, so you have the priest element there too, yeah. where you're, you're, you're literally fleeing to a city of priests, <laughs> you know? That, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, correct. That's a, that's an excellent point. Yeah. When uh, the allotment of land was distributed amongst the 12 mm-hmm. uh, clans, uh, the, the Levites were given 48 cities among the 12. So yeah. they didn't have a land of their own. They would be the priestly class yeah. spread out all through yeah. the land. And they took initially three, but then you know sure. more fully six of mm-hmm. those forty-eight cities to be yeah. uh, cities of refuge, and and they were um, they were Levites. Um, I don't remember if I had anything uh, that I wanted to bring out on that. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think that that's sure. really the yeah. main point that it was a city of priests. And right. isn't that wonderful? I mean, yeah. so you're running to the city, and it's not there's no political agenda, right, there, there's right. no tribal like yeah. tension. These people are dedicated to the service of God. Right. And that's who you're running and, to. And also the the fairness of God there too, where you know if you, if you you know let's say I'm a Benjamite Benjaminite uh, and you know if I stay in that city, my trial is amongst the family of someone I just killed. You know, and even if you say there's no malice, I did not mean this. I don't think you're gonna get the fair trial there. You know, uh, you know as where you can go to the Levites who they're they're and they are accountable to God for the decision mm-hmm. they're going to render. Yep. So you're able, you know, I, I feel like the Lord's giving them a way. To, okay, this is how you can have a system of fairness of you know because there's two things that get destroyed in a manslaughter thing. There's obviously the first person that died, but also the second person their their entire their entire social life is now ruined. I mean, mm-hmm. their role in the community will forever have a stain on it. And, you know, in God's grace, rather than having two things be destroyed, he, you know, he, he makes a way that, that, okay, you can flee to this city um, yeah. and, ha- and, and have a fair trial. Well, yeah, I mean, there's, there's real consequence here because, right. you know, if the elders of the city uh, give you that refuge in the city, you have to stay there yes. in that city. You yeah. cannot return to your mm-hmm. homeland, to your family, to yeah. your work. Uh, to those that love you most mm. and those that, that you have responsibility for. You have to remain yeah. there until the death of the high priest, yeah. which, again, is, is kind of an interesting idea yep. when, we, when we start talking yep. about how this gets fulfilled in Jesus. And the last thing about the cities of refuge is that it's available to anyone, mm. not just the Hebrews. It's anyone, right. any stranger or alien yeah. that's also living in the land. Mm. This refuge is available to Jew and Gentile wow. alike. Yeah. Tipping my hat here. Yeah. <laughs> you see where this is going. Yes. I think yeah. it's pretty clear. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and so just to remain there uh, in the city until the death of the high priest. Um, that, that person who was granted sanctuary can leave before then. They would mm-hmm. just be wiped out by the avenger of blood. Right. So they had to stay. Um, yeah. But then, oh, you know, once the high priest would die, they could go back to their old life. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how uh, atonement was, uh, was achieved um, in, in the cities of refuge. Uh, and then, you know, as we talked uh, briefly, uh, when we think about how that is a, a type of, of Jesus, mm. um, a couple of things come to mind. Uh, and first is what really struck me uh, with the modern evangelical uh, gospel message is this idea uh, that it's, it's really kind of emotional mm. you know, or psychological. Right. You know, there's no element... Well, I don't want to say no element, but I, I think it's very minimized or, or maybe pushed into the corner that um, there is a very real consequence to sin. Mm. It's eternal. It's severe. Yeah. And, and people just they don't understand it. Right. You know, uh, I've seen so many uh, calls to the gospel that are just pleas for um, emotional stability mm-hmm. or... Um, you know, God will sort of smooth out all the things yep. in your life. Yep. And, you know, those are grossly misrepresenting the, the promises that God's right. made to, to us. Yeah. He, is, he is the sanctuary from sin. He, he came to rescue His people right. from their sin, right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, I, I think what's missing in a lot of people's, and I'll say conversion, mm-hmm. um, that that doesn't have a, a, a real right. primary... Uh, place in in yes. their commitment to Jesus, right? Um, and, and I've seen it uh, mm-hmm. with these crusades. You know, I, I uh, uh, was uh, fortunate enough to take some training and go to a Franklin Graham mm. uh, uh, crusade when he was here in Pittsburgh yeah. a number of years ago. And you know, I think if the context is right, that kind mm-hmm. of thing can work well. Sure. But I, I think when people just walk in off the street right. and you know, with the music and the calls right. to 
like just sort of stir up your emotions right. and, and get you to, you know, make a, a commitment, yeah. you know, a decision. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. you know, I just, you know, I, I hope somewhere in there that there's something genuine happening. Right, you know? right. And I, I think that, you know, one of the modern, you know, the, uh, modern evangelicals, you know, I think some of the, the gospel that we preach or uh, that, you know, is like, hey, Jesus loves you. And, you know, you want to say, well, that, you know, that, that is true, but, but when you... You know, when you go look at Paul, what he's doing, he's not showing up to cities and acts, going, "Hey, God loves you." Mm-hmm. Um, that is part of you know, you know, an element of things, but that's not the gospel. Because you know, I feel like any un, un, unrepentant, uh, not born again person can go, "Oh, great, God loves me because I love me too." So, Amen. You know, <laughs> and yeah, you know, I'm you want to 100 on that. Yeah, and you want to say, "Yeah, God loves you enough to save you from your sin." That yeah. that's the, what His love is, yeah. and you know, I, I think that. Some of it, you know, I, I and it was, this is what I love about the alliance is our commitment to what we call the deeper life, mm-hmm. uh, that sanctified life of, you know, I think the obedience of faith, you know, it's not just, oh, I believe that Jesus really loves me a lot. It's no, I, I, I receive his grace and now I'm, I'm trying to walk in the spirit's power to obey his commands. Cause he says, if you love me, obey my commands. Oh, amen. Um, yeah. And there's yeah. an obedience there of it's not, Oh, I have to obey. It's I get to obey. I've been saved from yeah. my desire to sin, my want to yeah. sin. And now I have a sanctified spirit in me. Yeah. And I still have this sinful nature that I'm wrestling with every day, but I'm looking forward to the hope of the day where I no longer have the sinful nature, not that I play tennis in the clouds forever. You know, that's, yep, um, yep, you know, yep. so yeah, I definitely, I feel you there where um, the reality of sin is so minimized uh, where like you're saying, it's we'll come to Jesus. Cause it's, it's kind of the best thing for your finances. It's kind mm-hmm. of the best thing for your emotions. Yeah. And you want to say yes and amen. Uh, but you come to Jesus because he is Lord of all. And if you don't, well, then the wrath of God remains on you if you don't believe in the Son. So Yeah, and amen. And the wrath of God means nothing to you if you right. don't really understand right. sin and what its consequences Right, well, are. and if the gospel yeah. you heard is, well, just God loves you, you all, everyone. Yeah. Right, right, right. And you, you you say, yes, God loves you all, and God is also willing to, to damn all um, because of his wrath and his holiness. Mm-hmm. And that's not nearly, you know, and, and I, I say a lot of times in theology, things are a pendulum, and they swing back and forth. And, you know, I think maybe 50 or 60 years ago, there was more of the fire and brimstone sort of view. And now we've switched to this sort of hippie Jesus that, um, mm-hmm. hey, he's just, he's just my homeboy. Yeah. He's my friend. <laughs> And, you know, for me, I think one of my big things is that reverence to the Lord. I, I, I want, whether it's the way we do our worship services or the way I just live my life out, mm-hmm. of this is, this is different. You know, I, you know I, I think the best thing I've ever heard is like when you step at the edge of the Grand Canyon and you, you don't run as fast. You know what I mean? You're uh-huh, a little yeah. bit more reserved of how you... And I think now we just kind of have this sort of attitude of like, yeah, I, you know, God accepts me for who I am, so I just, just do however. And it's like... Yeah, he, 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 you're right. He, he has saved you just as you are, but he is calling you into holiness. And, yeah. and there's, a, yeah. a, a again, just that sanctified, that deeper life you're being called into. Mm-hmm. But, oh, oh, amen. And yeah. I think, you know, to, to those that are listening, you know, if, if you find yourself maybe, you know, you're one who's prayed that prayer and, mm. and now you're kind of wondering, like, am I backslidden? Am I, mm. am I moving forward or whatever? You know, I, I, I've always found that, you know, just doing that reflection, you know, Scripture tells you to examine yourself. Right. And, and I find that, um, you know, when I look at who I was or consider who I was mm. before um, Jesus rescued me, yeah. I, I didn't care about Jesus at all. Right. I, mean, I didn't know really much about him. Uh, mm-hmm. We were nominal Roman Catholics, sure. so we went to church either yeah. uh, Easter or Christmas, not both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, I knew who he was, but yeah. I mean, he meant nothing to me. Uh, yeah. I thought, you know, when I, when I was a teenager that... Um, Christianity actually was, um, you know, just something that kind of weak-minded mm-hmm. people would need to comfort yeah. them. Sure. You know, sky grandfather taking care of you, that's yeah. fine if you need that. Uh, you live, you live, you die, you mm-hmm. die, you're dead, you're gone, yeah. whatever. Uh, but he, he definitely got a hold of me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, you know, I, I, I like to think I'm, um, I have emotions, but I'm not terribly... Uh, I'm not emotion forward. Sure. Um, head forward. Right. And, and God kind of grabbed me there. Yeah. You know, and He met me in, in those places. Yeah. Um, uh, but now I'm totally different. Mm. You know, I, I'm a different guy. Mm. You know, I, I love to see these things in Jesus. I, I love to study scriptures yeah. and, and see mm. God's plan unfolding, this yeah. beautiful tapestry that 
you know, when you first start in your journey, these things just right. seem like isolated little mm-hmm. bits of interest and like yeah. curiosity. But the more you know, the more intimately they're linked. Right. It, it's it's outstanding. Yeah. You know, it the Bible is its own witness. Yes. And so yeah. you, you just keep finding these these linkages, and and the more you find, the deeper right. you know your commitment to to Jesus gets because you know it's real. Right. It's not fraudulent. It's not man made. It's not a fiction. Right. This is this is the most authentic thing that you you've encountered. Right. right. And uh, so I, I would just say, you know, for, for anyone listening, uh, really just examine yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, consider yourself who you were before mm-hmm. Jesus and then after Jesus. Right? Were you born again? Right. Are, are are you a new creation? Mm-hmm. Are there new things mm-hmm. in you? Not yeah. that you're perfect, right? You know, because we're on, yeah. we have that battle. Yeah. But if your mind is thinking on those yeah. things, like ah, you know, I, yeah. I, I keep messing up and I keep repenting and asking God for mm-hmm. forgiveness. Then I, I think you're in that battle. Right. You know, you you're you're rightly understanding your sin before God, yeah. and and, so and it, it's interesting because you know, First John, First John, there's, there's sort of that scary verse where it says, you know, if we continue in sin, uh, we know we're not of God. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people go, oh boy, I I'm a sinner. But it also says, I think it, I think it might be the next verse where it says, if we say we have no sin, we call God a liar. You know, and there's this recognition of. Um, Mm-hmm. We are a new creation that ha- that is being set free, and yet we are still uh, going to, to sin. And uh, and yet, I think the New Testament, uh, to the chagrin or to the annoyance of many uh, sort of easy believism sort of Protestant, it, it doesn't say, well, you know, uh, you know, you're Christian because you prayed that prayer that one time, or because you got baptized that one time, or you have that that little pamphlet. You, you know, it. It's always again going back to, well, you've been born again. Oh, look at your life. You've mm-hmm. you've seen that you now are living this deeper life. Um, you're seeing the fruit of the spirit, uh, and we know we can yeah. judge a tree by its fruit. You know, Jesus Himself says, and so um, there is, you know, I think a responsibility, and kind of actually would be part of my sermon this this uh, th- this Sunday as we talk about the Ten Commandments. The responsibility of when you are a recipient of grace to to then live in faith. And faithfulness, mm-hmm. and I think we've separated that idea of faithfulness and faith. You know, we think faith is just believing the same way of Santa Claus, and you want to say faith means more than that, especially in the Jewish context in the Old Testament. Faith is I believe these things, therefore I'm willing to act out on these mm-hmm. things. Yeah. And you know, and as James would say, faith without works is is dead. Right. So, right. yeah. Well said. Um, yeah. Well, let me just maybe wrap up a few things sure. here then with uh, with Jesus as the fulfillment of these mm-hmm. things. And, and and to me, one of the most beautiful uh, highlights or epiphanies maybe is that, you know, the city's refuge was only available to those who committed unintentional sin. Mm. But Jesus Christ is your refuge, even if you are an intentional sinner, right. that you can run to Him. And, uh, you know, when you look to Him with saving faith, that that mm. you will be forgiven, yeah, and you will be made clean, and mm. that's an amazing thing, yeah. Um, and uh, because when you have a high view of sin, as the Bible commands, we do, and you realize, you know, sin is telling the God of the universe, "I, I think I know more than you," or, or I, "I think I got I got it from here," and His willingness to forgive after that, you know, not just one sin, you know, it's like yeah. you know, over and over, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I think your heart just explodes with, "Wow, this is." Just so, you know, grace upon grace, you know. Amen, amen. And then finally, you know, this idea of remaining in the city of refuge until the death of the high priest. Mm. But we have a high priest who's eternal. Yeah. So we are there in... Mm. And in a way, you know, it's almost like uh, another way to understand all these phrases in Scripture that say, in Christ this, in Mm. Christ that. And Mm. as a new believer, I I really wasn't sure what that meant, Mm. you know, because, you you know... uh, uh, you could say like stop in the name of the law, yeah, you know, right, in the right. name of somebody, yeah. right? So you're you're sort of calling on their authority mm. and their power. But when you say in Christ, I think it's it's deeper yeah. than that. Yeah. And f- at least for me, I think the city of refuge um, helps to understand that we truly are. Our life is mm. lost in Him. Yes. Our life is in His mm-hmm. life, and yes. and so there, in a way, there's no going back. Mm. But we don't have that same kind of physical limitation. Mm. We can certainly go back to. You know um, those things that we left behind, sure. but we are not the same. Right. We're not going to go back. This, you know, the, right. the same individual. We are yeah. now different. Yeah, yeah. Because we are truly uh, remaining in Christ. Yeah, Amen. That's very powerful. And you know, I always, I, I think that idea of being in Christ, it's you know uh, something that we don't, especially in America, where we pick and choose our presidents every four years. You know, the idea that 
you know, for a king or a messiah or whatever, you know, in ancient worlds, there was, you know, you had a figure and that basically represented everyone in that community. What was true of the king was Mm -hmm. true of the people. And, you know, when you say, I'm in Christ, okay, that means that his death is my death, his resurrection is my resurrection, his righteousness is my righteousness, you know, and just on and on and on, you realize, okay, when you're getting to stand in Christ, all of those blessings, all of the the the, the grace, the forgiveness, all that just washes over you. Um, that Amen. that creates your worship. A- Amen. Yeah. And that gets made complete. You know, yes. I, I think in eternity, you know, that sanctification. You know, yeah. The whole the whole job of that through the Holy Spirit is to conform us to the image of Christ. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> so, right. And so, um, you know, we'll we'll be made complete in that way. Yeah. And, and how wonderful will that be? Yeah. Amen. How wonderful it will be. Well. We are right here at the 30-minute mark, so that's perfect. Uh, Well, I want to thank you for coming on and talking about the cities of refuge, three verses in Deuteronomy 4, but I think we got a lot of great stuff out of it. Thank you for coming on. Amen. Thanks for having me, Pastor Justin.